Hi, this is Chris of VitaminCM.com, and today we're going to follow up on our previous episode where we learned how to reuse an old computer as a server by learning how to do some interesting new things with that server. One of the first things that I want to show you how to do is be able to transfer files back and forth between your primary or desktop computer and the server. In order to do this, you need to start out by allowing file sharing on the server. So I have Windows Explorer open here on the server. And you can see here's the C drive and some of the different folders that are on it. So the quickest, easiest way to do it, if you notice down here, there's a thing called shared documents. I'm just going to take the C drive, click on it, and drag it down and drop it onto shared documents. So now if I click on shared documents, you'll notice it says local disk C, so it's shared. That means that other people can get to this drive. Now, I'm going to open up the C drive here. And on the C drive, I want to create a new folder. So I'll right click and say new folder. And I'm going to name this folder backup. OK, because I'm going to be using this to store my backup information from my other computers on the network. So if I click on the backup folder, there's nothing inside of it. All right, so I'll minimize that. And I'm actually going to minimize the VNC viewer also. On my primary computer or my desktop computer, what I need to do is open up Windows Explorer here, and I need to map to that drive on the network so that I can use it. So if you look here, these are the drives that are on my computer. If I go to Tools, Map Network Drive, it's going to ask me a couple things. So I want to give the drive a letter, so I'll name it S for Server. And I need to find the drive that I'm looking for. So if I click this Browse button, it goes to My Network Places. And inside of My Network Places, click Microsoft Windows Network. Then click on Work Group. And in Work Group, it will show me the other computers that are in this work group that I'm on. So if you notice, there's one that says Server here. And that's the server that we're looking at. And what I want to do is click on server itself. So that's really the C drive of the server. And I'll say OK. And I want to give it, and then I'll say finish. Now, if I go oh, click folders here in Windows Explorer, you'll see the S drive here is server and there's that backup folder that I just created and what I want to do is I want to create a folder inside that backup folder that I can store my information into so I'll right click and I'll say new folder and I'll just call it Chris in all capital letters Now, I'll minimize these windows, and I want to pull back up the VNC server window so I can look back at the server here. Now, if I open up the server, and remember that folder I created back up, if you look inside of there, there's the folder that I just created. Now that we have a drive map between our desktop computer and our server, we're ready to do some other things. So the main thing that I use this backup server for is for backups. And the software that you can use to do backups is a software called uh, SyncBack. It's a free software. Um, I've already downloaded it to my desktop. The information will be in the show notes. So if I open up the zip file, there's a setup exe file, so I'll double click that. And it's a typical wizard, so I'll click next, uh, accept the license agreement, click next again, decide where I want to install it, click next again, click next, and install. And it only takes a couple seconds to install and finish. Once you have SyncBack installed on your computer, you need to create what are called profiles. Profiles are different sections of your computer that you want backed up. So in order to do that, you can go to Profiles and then say New and create a backup profile. So it's going to ask you a couple questions to help you set up what you need. So what type of profile do you want? A backup for copying files to another directory or synchronization for keeping contents of two drives identical? Uh, I always go with backup, so I'll click OK. 
and we'll call this one ebooks and you'll see why in a minute so the first thing you want to pick is the source and the source is where are the files that you want to back up so click the little folder icon here and I'm just going to back up one folder inside of my documents because I don't want this thing to take a long time. So I'm going to back up my ebooks folder, which has a bunch of ebooks in it. Typically, you would go somewhere higher up, like just click on my documents and then you could grab it all in one shot. So I'll click OK. So that, does, that tells what I want to back up. Now, where do I want to put these backup files? So I want to put that on the server. So under destination, I'll click the folder and I'll go to the S drive server that we mapped earlier and I'll go inside of backup and I want this to go inside the Chris folder because these are my backups. So let's say there were other people in the house that had computers that they wanted to back up. They could have a folder, you know, my wife could have one called Andrea, you know, mom, dad, whatever. So I'm going to put my folder files inside the Chris folder. Now, there's several different tabs, simple, advanced, copy, delete, filter, etc. Um, let's go with simple because it's simple. So we're going to back up the source directory files, including all its subdirectories. Uh, that's typically the option you want to go to. Like, for instance, if you said my documents, you'd want to click my documents and you want all of the folders inside of it. And we'll click OK and our profile is created you can see it up here now it's going to ask if you'd like to perform a simulated run for this new profile so we'll say yes and it's telling me all the different files that are in there that have been modified and it will be all of them because i have never run this backup before so i'll say continue simulation so once i have my profile created I'll click on that profile, ebooks, and what I want to do is click run. And this will show me all the files that it's going to back up. And again, I haven't run this ever, so it's going to show me every single file in there. And click continue run. Now, you notice here the result says it's running. So it Typically, this is going to take really quick because there's only a couple of files there. But if it was something bigger, like, for instance, all my uh, music or, some, or all my movies or something, it would take a long time. And as you can see, the results have changed to success. And if I want, I can double click on this. And it will show me a log file, which is only one page because there's only a few things. It'll show me all the things that I backed up, where they went, and source is copied. Now, if I wanted to create another profiles, for instance, um, all of my music, I could say new. OK, I'll give it a name like music. Say OK. The source folder would be the library folder. That's where I store my music. The destination would be the server inside the backup folder inside of Chris. So I'd say OK. Then I would click OK and it's saved. Now I'm not going to do a simulated run here because you already saw how it works and this one will take a lot longer. So now you can see how you can create different profiles and you might want to create a few different profiles so you could say back up all your documents, back up your music, back up uh, your registry, something like that. Or if you don't want to spend a lot of time fiddling with this, you might just go to a really high level, like everything inside of my documents and just run that and that would back up everything at once. Now, what I'm also going to do, I'm going to open up the server and I'll pull up the backup folder. And if you notice inside of the Chris folder are all the files, all of my eBooks that I just backed up. So you can see how that works. One of the nice things that you can do once you have your server up and running is use that server as a print server. So I'm going to click on the VNC window now, open up the server, and I have a printer that's hooked up to this server, so I'll click Start 
printers and faxes, and you'll see the printer that I have hooked up there. It's an old HP printer. So if I right click on it and I select sharing, it says do not share, then it says share. So I'll click this one. I'll give the share a name. So I'll call it HP print and I'll say okay. And it's shared. So now if I minimize the server and I go to the desktop computer and I click start printers and faxes, I need to map this printer. So I'll go to add a printer, click next. And I want to say that it's a network printer because it's not locally connected to this computer. So I'll say next and browse for a printer. So I'll say next, I'll go into Windows network, the work group, and then the server, which is the same way we mapped the drive before. And when I click on the server, it will show me any shared printers hooked up. So I want to go to that one. I just set up HP print and I'll say next. And it says you are about to connect to a print on our server, blah, blah, blah. So yes, we want to connect to that. So say, okay. And do I want to use this as a default printer? No, I don't. I want to use the printer that's hooked up to this computer as a default, but I do want to be able to use it. So I'll say next and then finish. So now if you notice, I have this HP printer and then it says on server. So that's the computer that it's located on. So now I can print to this. So this is nice. If you have four or five computers in the house in all different areas and you don't feel like buying a printer for every single computer and setting it up, you can just hook one computer up to the one printer up to the network or the server computer and every printer in the house can map to it and print to it all at once. So not only does it save money, it saves space. So you don't have to have, you know, four printers all over the house.